Hi, I'm Jen with Making the Photo. As a photographer, I make my photos using a camera and a photo editing program. But is AI about to replace your camera? Should you sell your camera equipment? In this video, I create photos in Midjourney, Dali, and Stable Diffusion. I look at how well the AI understands photographic language, and I show you how realistic you can make an AI photo. Along the way, you'll find out which AI makes the best photos. When I made this video, Midjourney was alpha testing version 4, but they also had the test P or test photo model available. I looked at both for comparison. I also ran prompts through Stable Diffusion and DALL-E 2 to see which AI makes the best photographs. This video is all about text to image generation. In a separate video, I'll cover image to image generations and how to use actual photos or images as part of your prompt. Let's start with the obvious. If you want AI to make you a photo, make sure to ask it for a photo. Use words like photo, photography, or photograph as part of your prompt. Just saying realistic or real world isn't enough. Then add photographic terms to your prompt. Using photographic language makes it more likely that you'll get a photo realistic image. I've published a lot of articles defining photographic terms and how to create photographic effects, both in camera and with photo editing programs. If you want more information on photographic terms, I'll put a few links in the description below. Let's go through some types of photographic terms you can use. Even if you aren't making a photo, some of these terms may be just what you need to get the look that you want. First, don't just ask for a photo, ask for a specific type of photo. You can ask for food photography, a still life photo, or street photography. Prompt for a wildlife photo, a sports photo, or photojournalism. You can ask for portraits, glamour, or fashion photography. Landscape photography is popular, but you can also ask for fine art or conceptual photography. These styles are more artsy than real. Some of these genres are more recognizable to the AI than others. If you have a photography background, prompt for specific cameras and other photographic equipment. You can ask for drone photos or images from a specific type of camera, like a Canon, Nikon, or a Leica. You can ask for infrared photography, or you can ask for Polaroid shots or mobile phone photography. Midjourney version 4 even knows how to make a photo shot through a reflecting ball. It's not exactly right, but it's a pretty cool effect. You can prompt for specific types of lenses, like a fisheye or a macro. If you're getting too much blur in a photo, especially a macro photo, ask the AI to make the image in sharp focus or make it focus stacked. You can even try asking for specific lenses from Canon or Zeiss or specialty lenses like a lens baby. The AI may or may not know the specific type of lens, but asking for specifics emphasizes that you want a photograph. The AI is particularly good at creating historic photography and film types like wet plate, tintype, or cyanotype. You'll get the styles, colors, tones, and artifacts found in old photos. And some AI can render specific film types like Kodak Ektachrome or Fujifilm Velvia. Also prompt for specific camera effects and settings. By camera effects, I mean visual effects that are created by doing something with the camera, like intentional camera movement, or panning, or creating a zoom blur. You can ask for a long exposure effect to blur the water in these waterfalls, or you can ask for high speed photography with a fast shutter. You can either ask for sharp focus or bokeh with a shallow depth of field. You can ask for lighting effects like a lens flare or light trails. You can even ask for more advanced techniques like double exposure or HDR photographs. You can definitely prompt for f-stop, focal length, and shutter speed. This emphasizes the photography but I'm not so sure that I'm seeing the expected visual effects in the image. Photographic composition isn't necessarily different from other visual arts, but there are some compositional techniques used a lot in photography. You can ask for negative space or leading lines. You can ask for a low vantage point or aerial views. You can even prompt for forced perspective shots or specify your foreground, midground, and background. You can use compositional terms like rule of thirds, symmetry, or golden ratio, but I'm not always sure the AI gets it. 
and Midjourney got a little confused when I asked for framing, a subject framed by another element. It gave me both the moon framed in the tree branches and the entire photo in a frame. If you're after a portrait or something like still life, ask for specific lighting. You can ask for natural light or specify the light's position, in this case behind the person creating a silhouette. Or specify a specific type of studio lighting, like split lighting. In this case, Stable Diffusion did get a little confused and split my image too. You can ask for cinematic lighting, rim lighting, or a catch light in the eyes. You can even prompt for special photographic editing effects like you can do in Photoshop. For instance, you can ask for a selective color or a vignette. Of course, you can create these effects later on any image, and I'll put a link to a couple of tutorials in the description below. Or you can ask for a tiny planet photo. This effect is pretty easy to achieve in Photoshop with any photo, as I did with the selective color image. I'll put a link in the description to a quick tutorial on how to make tiny planet photos in Photoshop. Like other forms of visual art, asking for a photo in the style of a famous photographer is a good shorthand way of telling the AI how you want the photo to look. I'll include a link to the 20 most famous street photographers you should know, but look around for photographs you like. There's no guarantee the AI will recognize the photographic style, but the images may give you some good ideas. Midjourney version 4 nailed the styles and the subjects of Vivian Mayer and Elliot Erwitt who was famous for photographing dogs on the streets of New York City, and Mayer, who took a lot of selfies in reflective surfaces with her brownie camera. These AI images seemed so real that I actually ran a reverse image search to make sure it wasn't just pulling photos off the web. Annie Leibovitz and Lindsay Adler are well-known portrait and fashion photographers with a distinct style, but you can prompt for a more generic style. Put in a publication like Vogue, Life, or National Geographic, which all have their unique photographic styles. Including the words award-winning photo in the prompt may improve the image quality, or ask for a high-resolution photo. If you're trying to create a realistic-looking photo, there are a couple of terms you should avoid. The term photorealism seems an obvious choice if you're trying for a real photo, but photorealism is a style of painting and sculpture. The AI may ironically return a less real photo if you use this term though not always. Also, generally avoid terms that refer to video game graphics or other graphic art forms. Terms like Octane Render, Unreal Engine, 8K, 4K, that sort of thing. But as with all rules, there are exceptions. The AI does sometimes return photos within photos. If this happens, try changing the word photograph to photo or asking for no border. I ran a lot of photography terms through the top AI image generators, and I have a few thoughts on which is best for creating photos. But first, let's see what you thought. A couple of weeks ago, I put a poll up on my community page with four Cartier-Bresson style photographs. All the AI generators did a good job recreating this iconic photographer and the decisive moment. The results are in. You thought Dal E was best. After running nearly 100 photographic terms and styles through the various models, I ended up liking Midjourney version 4 the best. Midjourney Test Photo came in second. It's actually easier to get photographs in Stable Diffusion and DALL-E, but the photos aren't necessarily that great. They are more like quick snaps taken with a mobile phone. Midjourney makes more artistic, fine art photos. Midjourney version 4 has much more photographic knowledge, but it will try to go painterly on you when it can especially on landscapes and portraits, probably because there are so many paintings of landscapes and portraits out there. But you will always get a beautiful image out of Midjourney, whether it's photographic or not. While people aren't perfect in Midjourney right now, they are less distorted than they come out in Stable Diffusion and DALL-E. Can you make a photograph without a camera? The answer is yes, you can make a photograph with AI. Use photo terms describing lighting, focal length, or camera settings. AI won't replace the experience of a photo shoot, but it can create stunning photographs. Let us know your best photography prompts and try out any photographic terms and styles that I missed. If this video was helpful, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This is Janet making the photo. Let's make something amazing together.